So we're out here today and we are harvesting all the green beans. Uh, they are loaded down with beans and so we're just pulling the plants. I've already done one round of canning with these and this will be the last round of canning that we'll get with these uh, green beans. These are bush beans. And then I've got all of the onions harvested. Really big, nice, good sized onions. Have a whole ton of these. These are gonna last us all winter. And a lot of these onions will go into the making of our salsa plants. Which, uh, our tomatoes are doing great. Our peppers are doing good. I got Arkansas Travelers and right next to them, I got some massive mortgage lifters that are coming in. And uh, I've never grown these before, but they're just doing fantastic and they're looking huge. <laughs> So we'll see how that goes, but it's gonna make a lot of salsa. And uh, look at that. What in the world? These things look absolutely ugly, but they'll make a lot of salsa. Today was an absolutely crazy busy day. I harvested potatoes, green beans, onions, I canned about 14 quarts of the potatoes, dry pack method, rebel canning, not USDA approved. There are homesteaders out there in YouTube land who would be like, oh my gosh, you're gonna die. <laughs> so what you do is you cut up the potatoes, and this is not a full recipe, so you need to look it up on your own. Do your own research, right? Um, I cut up the potatoes, put them into a large bowl, um, chunk them up, you know, pretty big size, and then um, toss them with but melted butter, salt, and pepper, and then put them into the canning jar, into the canner it goes, and 15 pounds pressure for 40 minutes is what I chose to use, and um, I think they're gonna turn out fantastic. So um, I saw people doing them at less pressure for about that time, so I think 15 pounds pressure at 40 minutes would be fine. Anyway, so, um, they look great and a lot of people are doing this. A lot of people are doing this, but yeah, there are people out there in YouTube land who will be like, oh no, 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 you can't do that. You cannot do that. <laughs> so those are not people who watch my channel anyway. Anyway, um, that there's one reason right there I won't get invited to speaking events for homesteaders because <laughs> I do stuff like that. Um, Anyway, we're going to talk about some stuff today. I've been watching the news. I got some emails from some of you guys on some past videos that I've done and um, one of them was this talk about inflation. So it came out last week that inflation was now at 3%, Zach, 3%. You said we were going to go to hyperinflation, and here it is. Inflation's going down. Well, let me ask you this. Are you seeing any of the prices coming down? <laughs> No, you're not. You're and you're not gonna either. On some things you might see some prices coming down, but the reality is they don't gauge the CPI, you know, the 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 inflation rate, you know, with regular prices of what people buy and sell anyway. They don't. Then they never will because they want to be able to fudge the numbers. Our government right now is basically like Baghdad Bob. And I always refer back to Baghdad Bob because there are people out there like, oh, inflation's coming down, everything's great. You know, that's what our administration does. And that's exactly what happens when people began, you know, when, the, when there's a collapse that's about to happen, they're out there saying, oh, everything's fine, we're going great. World War II, Germany did the exact same thing as, as you know, allied forces were invading the Rhineland. They were like, oh, don't worry, we're okay, we're beating the allies and we're this and that. And then Baghdad Bob in Iraq, in the Iraqi war, he's out there, you know, there's no Americans here as Abrams tanks are rolling in the background. <laughs> it's the same thing. Uh, the rate of inflation has supposedly gone down because there's a number of deflationary things that are happening. But all that does is swing the pendulum one side over really hard. And when it, that pendulum comes back over to the inflation side, it will be like way more than you've ever seen before in your lifetime. I will double down, I will triple down, you will see the day where you pay $10,000 for a loaf of bread. Unless, unless they do some sort of currency reset, which is probably what they're going to do. I mean, they're, listen, you can't be $32 trillion in debt and expect to pay that off. What countries have done all throughout history is they inflate their currency in order to pay down their debts. Weimar Germany is a prime example, but there are many others. When you have so much debt that you will never be able to pay it, you inflate your currency. <laughs> 
and then you reset it. And that's probably what the CBDC, the FedNow thing, the FedNow uh, launched recently this last month, I think. I mean, that's all baby steps to get to that point. So I know there's some of you out there, Zach, you said we'd be going to hyperinflation and inflation's going down. It's not really going down. Prices are still staying high and people are demanding higher wages, which is going to put more companies out of business, which is going to create a deflationary event, which will then swing everything back over to QE 1 billion. And you're going to have hyperinflation. You will have hyperinflation. There's no way out of this. You're going to see people out there, and I've seen this for years, who will maintain and claim that everything is risky, everything is teetering, and we're going to see a stock market collapse. I highly doubt you will ever, during whenever times like this happen, you never see a stock market crash. You, because you, here's the deal. The plunge protection team was created in 1986 under the administration of Ronald Reagan. Its sole purpose in life is to make sure that there's never another stock market crash. So there won't be. Um, well, I can't, you can never say never. <laughs> but chances are it's very unlikely that there will be a stock market crash. Stock markets are indicators per, of perceived wellness or decline. And nobody wants to be the, that administration where the public perceives a decline. And so the plunge protection team, which does exist, it's not a conspiracy, you can look it up, they will prevent another stock market collapse to thwart a perceived decline in the economy. Because the economy could be going down the tubes, and it is, we see that with a $32 trillion debt. But hey, the stock market's up, so we're okay. <laughs> All right, that's enough about that. Um, the Bradleys. I said um, a few months ago uh, in a video, I said that us sending Bradleys to Ukraine could be a game changer. Um, and Abrams tanks, which are yet to show up. But Bradleys are a very effective fighting vehicle. I know this because I drove one for a year and a half. I did multiple gunnery ranges. I did multiple rotations at the uh, NTFS or whatever, NT, not NTC because that's stateside, but the one they have over in, in Hohenfels, uh, Germany, and, um, and uh, Grafenveer. I've done rotations out of both those. I've been to Hohenfels twice. So I know what it means to be trained on a Bradley. And having spent a year and a half in the driver's seat of a Bradley, it took me about a year and a half before I finally felt confident in that position that I could go into battle and do my job effectively. It took me a year and a half. For the first, you know, especially six months in that thing, I didn't know what was up, you know, and... It was, and that's where they put usually new privates. They put new privates in the driver's seat. And then you, you spend enough time there and then you work your way up to gunner. And then I had a choice uh, after the last deploy, the deployment we did in Macedonia, I had a choice to either become a gunner on a Bradley or to be a dismount. And I chose dismounted infantry. So uh, they rotated me to an infantry, a dismounted infantry squad. Anyway, all that to say, you can't throw Bradleys <laughs> at a bunch of untrained troops and be like, here you go, jump on in, go into battle. You're, you're going to get slaughtered. And that's exactly what has happened in Ukraine. I think they've said they've the totals are between 35 and 40% of the Bradleys that we've sent over there so far have been destroyed. If it was me, I, I've had a number of you guys email me and say, hey, Zach, you know, the Bradleys, are, they're getting slaughtered over there. I don't know if you noticed. Because I, I said... That, you know what, if you put Bradleys over there, it could be a game changer. But you have to have trained and competent crews. People who know what they're doing. You can't put a gunner in the gunner seat of a Bradley who's never been through a Hohenfels or an NTC rotation and expect him to be competent behind that gunner seat or in that gunner seat. He will never be competent. If I had it, if I was you know, calling the shots over there, and I had at my disposal Bradley's and Abrams tanks and unexperienced crews for those assets, I would put them in defensive measure, def def defensive positions, and, and I would hold ground with those. I would not be taking ground with those because as soon as you move those things with inexperienced crews, they're going to be missile magnets. 
Um, but I, and I said that before, I said that before in the videos, I said, you've got to train these crews and I don't know how they're going to train these crews, you know, in six months. It took me again, a year and a half before I really felt confident in that driver's position. And about that time, then they're ready to move you up and put you in a gunner seat. Anyway, all that to say, yeah, the Bradleys are getting slaughtered. Um, it's a waste of taxpayer money. We're just, we're just flushing money down the toilet over there. It's absolutely ridiculous. And it just goes to show you that we, we don't care. Nobody cares about anything anymore. Nobody cares about their job. Nobody cares about workmanship. Nobody cares about quality craftsmanship. Nobody cares about anything. Everything that we get today, everything we buy today to use for things, it's like it lasts, you know, six months to a year. And I mean, the vehicles that we have, everything, everything today is garbage. Nothing is made to last anymore. And nobody cares. Nobody cares. Um, so it's like, what do you do? I don't know. I'm just tending my garden. <laughs> I'm just tending my garden. I'm growing food and I'm putting food up in my pantry. And because uh, I know at some point this is all going to be, this is all going to come crashing down and we're all going to be in a world of hurt. So I hope you're out there doing something too. I've got um, three plants, three tomato plants in my garden that have a disease. Two of them have one disease and the other one has a disease. I, it's different than the other two. But that usually happens every year. I, you plant so many plants and so, a certain amount of them, a certain percentage of them is going to suffer from some sort of disease or pest resistant, pest, pest pressure or you know, disease or some sort of issue. And so I think this year I planted about 35, 36 tomato plants. And um, three of them have come down with a disease that are going to keep them from probably producing. I'm going to go um, and swing for the fences on these. And I'm going to put some borax and neem oil and Dr. Bronner's sal suds on them and see if that doesn't help them. Um, maybe there's some sort of mite issue. Uh, the Dr. Bronner's can help with fungus issues and so can neem oil. So if there's a fungus issue, I don't know what it is. It's, I'll maybe, maybe I'll show you in another video. But I've got some disease pressures um, on three of my plants. So far, I've only found one tomato hornworm on one plant. And it was a small one, and I picked it off. But to me, that's fantastic. I have, har have hardly any pest pressures this year, insect pest pressures this year, on any of my plants. Um, my squash is coming up and over here to the side, you can't see it off camera. And I have no squash bugs on there. I found, I think three squash bugs so far this year and that's it. And I, and we just had a heavy rain the other day. So I'm going to go ahead and take, um, uh, the borax and I'm going to put that at the base of each plant and I'm going to see how that does. That's what I did before. And also I'm going to use the neem cake and I'll try to do a video on that coming up. So anyway, all that to say, um, perfect pickler. A uh, number of you guys, a number of my patrons have uh, made some orders. I'm going to make some perfect pickler uh, fermentation kits available to my patrons. Um, if you guys want a ferment, if you're getting into fermentation, now is the time to be doing it. You're harvesting vegetables from your garden. And if you want to try fermentation at home, perfectpickler.com is where you want to go. Right now, if you order any order on perfectpickler.com for fermentation, if you want to make, you know, fermented sauerkraut, kimchi, even, you know, kombucha or water kefir, you know, you can use these kits to do that. And they work fantastic at that. We make, I make fermented cabbage and carrots all the time and, and we eat it for almost every meal. But any order right now at perfectpickler.com, perfectpickler.com comes with free recipes. I will include free recipes with each order, okay? And uh, right now, it's gonna be the green bean recipe that we offer on our website. Fantastic, if you have green beans coming in right now, I have a fantastic green bean recipe that will go out with every order at perfectpickler.com for the rest of the month, okay? You will love this recipe. So check it out, um, perfectpickler.com. All right, guys, love you. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you think about the Bradleys. Let me know what you think about inflation. What a mess we are in. What a mess we're in. Let me know how your gardens are doing. Let me know how your green beans are doing. 
Um, some things are doing really well. I'm, I'm, doing a, I'm having a really good year this year so far in the garden. I'm doing a really good job, but I'm out here a lot. <laughs> I'm taking the time to be out here a lot, so we're doing good. Rebel canning potatoes. Let me know what you think about that. All right, guys. See you next time in the homestead. Bye. The largest Roman gold stash ever found was in Trier, Germany in 1993. 2,500 Roman coins worth over $1.2 million in melt value today was pulled from an excavation site. The obvious lesson here is that gold holds its value over time. Now, take this stack of old Soviet Union rubles. Do you know how much these are worth? Zilch. It's paper. It holds no value and, and like all paper and government fiat currencies will not last the test of time. Nobody a thousand years from now is going to unearth these or these and jump for joy at the wealth that they have just uncovered. Only one historical example of wealth preservation has stood the test of time over and over again. The safeguard of physical, physical gold and silver. If you have spent your entire working life putting money into a 401k or other savings and investment products, they have likely made pulling your money out either very hard or almost impossible. Genesis Gold Group can help you put that money safely into a physical gold and silver product that, like the Roman coins, will maintain their buying power long into the future. Call Genesis Gold Group today, right now, and let them develop a strategy for your savings, 401k, or self-directed IRA. A strategy of physical gold and silver. You can call the number on the screen or visit them at genesisgoldgroup.com. And be sure to say that you heard about them from an American homestead. Hey guys, did you know you can become a patron of an American homestead? They get access to private videos and we send them gifts from the homestead that we make here on the homestead. And we also enter our patrons into special giveaways that are only available to them. And before you go, please check out these other great videos. Go ahead, click. Oh wait. <laughs>